How long do you think shopping malls are going to last in New Jersey and the rest of the country? Hey there, in jru22.com here with another uh, miscellaneous general interest vlog. And a few months ago or weeks ago, we did a, a story about the future of retail in, uh, in New Jersey and, and, and beyond. And the, today's piece is a little bit more about just the, the big shopping mall, the big one. Not a strip mall or various stores located in downtown, uh, any town USA, but it's these giant massive shopping malls, you know, with like three or four anchor stores, you know, like the soup, uh, department stores. Um, I mean, how, how, how long can they last? These are massive blobs of expensive real estate. Um, with, the, with the crisis now, you know, the crisis, it's making uh, online shopping a, a lot more attractive. I mean, the, I really see like a limited time for these malls unless something turns around quickly. And, you know, just to speak favorably about the malls, I, mean, I guess back in the day, one of the good things about going shopping at a physical store is where you got to touch the things, you got to see things. Um, they had a lot of merchandise in these stores. You got to, you know, try them on, feel them, look at them, you know, compare. Um, not just clothes, but like in any kind of electronics, especially audio stuff. You could listen to the equipment, tinker around with it, you know, play around with it. Do side-by-side -side comparisons and make your judgment that way. And that was like the old way of shopping. But these days, you know, most online stores have really, really, like, tremendously good return policy. You could buy and return things uh, five, six times in a row until you find the one you like. I mean, it takes a week or two to finally uh, get what you want. It's a little bit of a hassle packing things up and shipping and returning. I don't know, but that's, uh, it kind of eliminates the reason not to try and buy things online. Whatever, whatever the case is, I mean, that's, that's sort of the deal with capitalism, you know, sort of, you know, the market will decide if the, if the customers want to just deal and they're okay with buying things online and not touching and feeling, I guess uh, those days might be over soon. But I have a question. This, this makes me wonder, you know, all these shopping malls for a long time survived with the m massive amounts of overhead. I mean, massive, like heavy duty rent, insurance, a uh, lot of employees, security guards, and, and it was like the overhead was, was immense. So their profit margin on most items was you know, 500% or whatever it may have been. Um, it, it, it makes you wonder, like, shouldn't things, like when you buy them online, when they, when they have a skeleton crew dealing with the, the uh, their overhead is substantially lower uh, than a retail physical operation. You would think that the price for similar things would be, you know, 75% less or more. Um, and I'm just kind of wondering how maybe people became conditioned by, you know, expensive things. And they, they just thought, hey, this is this is normal for a $100 shirt or $200 shoes. I mean, I'm sure something shoes are, are a little bit of a different story because they those are a little more labor intensive than a shirt that's made on a you know, it's re really easy to make a shirt these days. But I think a lot of people became conditioned to paying these things without ever questioning. Or I'm sure the people that work for these companies know really what the cost is that goes into uh, making something like that. But, uh, you know, I have to say, though, you know, some companies that have the, the big uh, retail operations like Amazon. Amazon's going, they're stealing all the business. There's going to be one store in the future, Amazon. But I bought a, a semi-decent polo shirt uh, for 10 bucks, I believe. And it rivaled like a Nordstrom brand shirt, at least in the beginning. I looked, I looked, I studied the stitching and the quality of the, the materials, the buttons. And it was a really well-made shirt. I have to say, though, washing it a couple times, it started sort of starting to get a little tattered. So maybe that's where the difference ends uh, because the material is not a very long-lasting material. I don't know, but I still think there's a lot of margin left. I guess they have to build a lot of things in to uh, stay profitable. You know, you know, we want people to make a profit if they sell something to us that they paid for to make. But I don't know. But just remember, you know, remember, I remember when I was a kid, you know, you people, they were mall rats. You'd go there and hang out and you'd do stuff. You'd hang out at the mall. It was like a big social scene now. The last time I went to the mall, I, saw, I didn't see many people there to begin with uh, because of the economy. But people, most people, they just socialize online now. Even when they're at a physical mall, they were all sitting down on a bench, not even talking to each other, just staring at their phones. It's like the matrix. I don't know. 
So what do you think is going to happen with malls? Are they going to go away or is something new going to take its place? I don't know. If you like the video, please hit subscribe and the bell and all that stuff and I'll see you next video.